Yeah, Dragonlance. Dragonlance is definitely in there. And McCaffrey. And McCaffrey. She thinks she's science fiction. <laughs> uh, so uh, they're. I can give her that again. Yeah, that um, really, if you haven't read Dragonflight, I'll just say to all of you, read Dragonflight. It holds up really well. In fact, it's better than a lot of what's being published today. Um, it has beautiful use of language. Uh, Hugo Award winner. Um, and it's one of the quintessential uh, let's fly on dragons and do cool stuff books. But it's also very literary and, and awesome. So uh, Dragonflight is, um, is, is really, really good. Um, but it is science fiction, technically. Um, you, before that, you said dragon, was it Lance or Lan? Dragon Lance. Lance. Dragon Lance is the epic equivalent of Bob Salvatore. They're, um, they are D&D uh, &D adventures taken and rewritten as epic fantasies. Um, uh, they are quite good. Uh, they scale a little young. Um, yeah. Where's Martin? Martin is smack dab between these two. Um, um, and he's really more on the epic side, but he, he avoids some of the epic stuff, um, kind of subverts them intentionally. Like a lot of his protagonists are more on the heroic line. And heroic doesn't mean that they're always heroes. That's just the name of the tradition, because uh, it tends to focus on gritty, one dude, low magic, um, you know, like Conan and things did. Um, and so he's, he's really writing epics that steal a few things from over here. Um, is, is where I would put Martin. Yeah. Not to sidetrack us, but you said technically science fiction. Could you answer that question? Like, what is fantasy? And what is I can't. Um, but Anne McCaffrey said she was writing science fiction. She put a prologue in every one of the books that said, this happens on this planet in this star system. And they're genetically modified animals that are local, that they have genetically modified to become these big flying talking dragon things that use something that really feels like magic. And it deals a lot with like astronomical yeah. cycles. Mm -hmm. So, so um, I allow the author to just say, this is what I think this is. Because having an argument about what's fantasy, I mean, uh, The Prestige, which if you guys have seen that movie, the book is fantastic. It won the World Fantasy Award the year it came out. And the author said, yeah, but this is science fiction. So, whatever. All right, well, what else we got? Good kind. Good kind, is, good kind is epic that's also stealing from heroic a little bit. Um, because good kind tends to have the one central protagonist, but it is the fate of the world stuff. I would put good kind over here, but he's reaching over and saying, I'm going to do epic fantasy that's really focused on a couple of characters with, um, with a strong heroic tradition about those characters. So, yeah. But that's, this, is my, this is where I'm putting things. What else, what else do you guys like in this tradition? Okay. Pratchett, Pratchett's got it. I mean, he's he. he he's, yeah, he really does. He re, he really has his own category. Uh, Pratchett is the genius. Um, um, if people come to me, I, I I will say that I feel that there are two legitimate geniuses writing in fantasy today. One's Pratchett, the other's Guy Gabriel K. Okay. The rest of us are doing an okay job, and some are doing better than others. But those are the those those are the two top writers in our field. Um, and Pratchett is completely undescribable. Um, if you want to read a good Pratchett book, pick up either The Truth, uh, Going Postal, or Guards Guards. Don't start at the beginning. Um, strongly recommend you don't start at the beginning because they're all standalones anyway. Uh, because he got better and better as he wrote. He started, his first book is like a fantasy parody. It's a parody of fantasy books, and it's okay. Um, but about four or five books in, he realized, I'm going to stop parodying fantasy and I'm going to write humor about the human condition. And something changed where his characters got better and his satire got better. Instead of parody, it became satire. Um, and it just works so much better, the, the new way. Um, he's gotten better and better. Like, um, I used to say The Truth was my favorite, but Going Postal was just brilliant, and so was the sequel. So, and those are more recent of his, so yeah. My favorite is Going Postal right now. Okay, st okay good, they get better and better. Yes, so and you can start like that and just go, Pratchett has, um, has through characters. They're all basically in the same world, but he's got these set of books he writes about death and other characters from other, and he's got this set of books he writes about the city guard, the city watch. And then he's got um, one he writes about an incompetent wizard named Winswind 
Um, and you, you, if you want to read Pratchett reading order, Google Pratchett reading order, and people have lots of suggestions of where to start and things like that. So Pratchett's his own weird thing. Okay, we got to talk about children's um, because this is this is pretty obvious. Um, but what you've got to the thing you've got to keep in mind is um, the children's line um, up until the last ten years. A lot of these things would be considered children, but they're, they're put in these traditions because children's ha really was undefined. What is a children's book? What is a teen book? And things like that. They started doing a lot more focus on teen novels um, more recently, um, recently meaning last 10 years. Um, once upon a time, you know, all these things were shelved in the same place in, in, a, in a library. And now you'll see there's a teen section and, and stuff like this. But usually this tradition was the middle grade fantasy tradition. The YA traditions were all kind of over here, because Shanna is really YA. David Eggs is probably YA. Um, Dragonlance is YA. You can make an argument that, um, that a lot of Jordan is YA that moves into adult. Um, and, but the children's, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious what's in here. Um, kids get sucked into a fantasy world with Harry Potter kind of being at the end. Um, uh, mm, no. Um, just because this, this line right here is kind of the same archetype of story, uh, and Earthsea isn't in there, but it is, it is more of an epic written for, for teens, honestly. And so it, it gets kind of weird what is children's and what is not. It's so hard to define. Um, I mean, where, where do you put uh, teen uh, writers? Where do, where do you put the blue sword, right? Yeah, YA, but there wasn't a YA category when it was published. And so... Where is it? It's really heroic starring a girl. It's the, one of the only ones that you'll find in the heroic line that stars uh, a female protagonist. Um, but, um, but it's YA, but there really wasn't a YA category, but that one was kind of targeted at, ki at, at teens back then, and there was a YA category, but it wasn't as YA. Anyway, so it, it gets kind of weird where, where you stick things like that. But if you want to do that, then these guys are good. Um, Harry Potter, of course. Uh, let's let the teen authors and children, uh, middle grade authors tell us, or fans tell us, what they like in this tradition. Lloyd Alexander? Lloyd Alexander, yeah. Pied, pied. That doesn't have the boy from real world yeah. effect in the fantasy. It world. doesn't. It's different. It doesn't. Um, but everyone, it was marketed as a children's book, as opposed to Shannara, which is kind of the same story, was marketed not. And I think it's the distinction that in the, um, for a long time, ch the, the middle grade was considered children's, and the teen was just lumped with regular fantasy. And now we've kind of split out teen as its own thing. Susan Cooper. Yeah, Dark is Rising. Um, And the thing is, like, it's, it's kind of disingenuous to put all of this in children's and not put some of these, because basically, like, Tamara Pierce is what all the boys were reading David Eddings, right? And the girls were reading, like, Tamara Pierce or, or, or Dark is Rising, for whatever reason. That's just what happened. You were the other way around? Yeah. Um, but, but um, and so a lot of these are actually probably in the epic or heroic traditions. Um, it's just that, you know, now we lump them all in teen. And it, it's, it's just that I kind of imagine this children's sort of Narnia thing that has its own line. Brandon Moles. Really. Yeah, Moles doing this. Um, and it's just the, the kid from our real section or another. These, I would probably move over there. Um, but let's, let's go on to the weird. Um, would you put Gaiman in weird? Yeah, Gaiman. Yeah, Gaiman. Uh, Gaiman is definitely weird. Um, Neil. Um, uh, Rockstar Gaiman is over here. Um, so is um, so are all the people who count themselves as the new weird. Um, so Perdita Street Station by China Mieville. Um, China is probably over here. These are the genre bl blenders. Um, all of the slipstream stuff is probably in here. So Jay Lake and people like that. Um, everybody who's just kind of like I'm. I'm not going to do like fantasy, but I am, and I'm going to incorporate fantasy elements, and I'm going to have one foot in magic realism, um, and I'm going to have one foot in horror is kind of where these things are going. So I'm um, trying to think of some in the middle, though. There's got to be some people in there um, that I'm missing. Uh, Zelazny, that's a good example, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Amber is kind of, definitely right, right in this tradition. Um, so 
So there we are. That's just kind of the things that given you way more than you want to know. But the idea is to kind of you know, pick some of the traditions, read a few books in the traditions, um, and you can kind of get a feel for fantasy. And then read some of the modern stuff, like read China if you want to do this, or, or read um, Abercrombie if you are interested in heroic, or you know, uh, read Malazan if you're interested in, in, in epic, that kind of thing. What would an example of a China title be? Uh, Perdita Street Station was what, his, his breakout. Um, I think it's most award-winning. Someone will have to tell me. The City in the City uh, did very, very well. Um, he's, got, he's got really um, also one foot. He's got a lot of feet. One of them's in literary. Um, you know, and what's that? Yeah. Uh, I would put some of, um, some of Cory Doctorow's books over here, though most of them are science fiction. Uh, so there you go. That's more than you wanted to know on all of this stuff. And these are all just my distinctions to help me understand the, the way the genre divides. You could do this whole thing with science fiction, too. Would you, would you consider like steampunk and other punk genres in here? Or do they do yeah, probably. The, steampunk has its own, um, its own line. Um, that, that, that's its own thing, really. Um, but it broke off the weird, definitely, and, and made its own thing. Steampunk is perpetually feels like it's on the cusp of really breaking out big and never quite has. Um, and it's been there for like 15 years now. Um, so... It's cool. It's got its own culture. You can Google and read about steampunk. Um, but you know, cyberpunk um, was an offshoot of, uh, of science fiction, um, and it's not with the weird at all. It's definitely straight up science fiction. Um, they're both called punk, but they they're very different uh, subgenres. People just call steampunk steampunk, kind of I think because cyberpunk hat was such a cool sounding word. They yeah. even have their own cons. Yeah, yeah. Steampunk is big. Um, if you want to read cyberpunk, the, the books to read, um, Neuromancer. Neuromancer by William Gibson, um, Snow Crash um, by Neil Stevenson, and um, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, which isn't actually uh, cyberpunk, but will help launch the movement. A lot of Philip K. Dick, the, they co-opted, and they kind of pretend he's cyberpunk when he's not. Um, the movie was, but the, the books aren't. So, Yeah, well, they're kind of weird. Uh, science fiction, but yeah. All right, let's move on to another question. This is all just kind of my stuff, so this, you know, yeah. Do you consider Infinity Blade science fiction or fantasy? Uh, sci Infinity Blade? Um, Infinity Blade is walking that weird line, like Star Wars is, where you're using, you're using it's, it's really um, uh, space opera without the space. Uh, it's where you, you use hand wavium to, to pretend that you've got science. It's like Star Trek, right? There's, there's not science in Star Trek, there's magic. But we use hand waving to pretend it's science fiction. And it is, because we define it that way. But teleporters, you know, all of this stuff, this is all magic, um, just in a, in a future setting. Same with Star Wars. And they can live through technology, yeah. which is probably why they classify this sci-fi, I thought. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, you can cl you, it should be classified where, it, where we feel it's right. But it's, there's no hard, fast science on what's science fiction and what's fantasy. That's why the two genres are so easily lumped together, even though they, they're very different in a lot of aspects. All right, other questions?